This man is about to have a heart attack and die at 53 years of age. This heart attack and death made headlines around the world. Vicdan azabından kurtulsanız, tarihin azabından kurtulamayacaksınız. Tarihin azabından kurtulsanız, Allah'ın azabından kurtulamayacaksınız. Hepinizi saygıyla selamlıyorum. Birleşime 20 dakika ara veriyorum. From India to the UK to Ireland to the Middle East and Australia, it set social media buzzing. It wasn't his death that was news, it was what he said before his heart attack hit. It was big news because of the implications. Did God strike him down because of what he said? That was the question being asked, because the scriptures do say that God will curse those who curse Israel. Genesis 12, 1 through 3. Now the Lord had said to Abram, Get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. God's foreign policy is pretty simple. If you bless Israel, you will be blessed. If you curse Israel, you will be cursed. Welcome to the Watchman channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963. Thank you all so much for your prayers and support. God bless. Ephesians 5, 15 and 16. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Big time pushback tonight from Memphis Shelby County Schools parents mm -hmm. after plans were revealed for something called an after school Satan club at one Memphis elementary school. The club will be the first of its kind in Tennessee. The organization, the Satanic Temple, says that there is a Christian club that meets here at Chimney Rock Elementary School as well. They tell me tonight they have every right legally to be here. We spoke with parents and grandparents today who tell me they still have a lot of questions. I think it's BS. Um, I think it could be held somewhere else um, and not a school. Some parents and grandparents at Chimney Rock Elementary shared their frustration after hearing about a new after school club coming next year. We don't go to a school unless there is another religious club operating. June Everett is the national campaign director for After School Satan Club. She says Chimney Rock parents reached out to them to bring the after school club to the school. Effort says a 2001 Supreme Court ruling gives them and the Good News Club, which is a Bible club sponsored by Child Evangelism Fellowship, the right to be at the K-5 through school. I'm about to come unglued right now. I cannot believe this is a kindergarten through fifth grade school and they're letting a satanic club come in here. Everett says the Satanic Temple does not believe in literal or supernatural Satan, but parents still have questions about what the club will do. It's going to be where our children are. We should have had some earlier notification, a chance to say maybe this is not something that the parents here would like. Everett tells us typical activities are science and arts and crafts oriented. She says they also do community projects. Chimney Rock will be the Satanic Temple's fifth active club in the country announced this year. The Satanic Temple sent out this flyer publicizing an after-school Satan Club meeting at Chimney Rock Elementary January 10th, 2024. It quickly got the attention of local clergy members. I can go in the school building and, and, and pray, but yet we can rent a facility to the Satanic Temple and they can give a party for our children. It's ridiculous. It's absurd. We can take Satan and view him. Satan and um, this creature and this, you know, uh, character, however we'd like. We don't have to believe a, a Satan as this evil deity. Um, we can view Satan as we wish, and um, that's exactly what we do. Second Corinthians 4, 3 and 4. But even if our gospel is veiled, 
It is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. During the end times, the Bible says that wickedness and evil will run rampant all over the world. Jesus warned that by resisting these things that Christians would be hated by all nations. Jesus said the world hated him first, so that we should expect that the world will hate us as well. Satan isn't masking his intentions anymore, is he? Battle lines are being drawn and people are choosing sides. If you know someone who doesn't know the Lord, tell them. Time is definitely running out for them to come to Jesus. Revelation 12.12 12. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you, having great wrath, because he knows that he has a short time. A good indicator we are living in the last moments of human history is that Satan has infiltrated our society in every way possible. We must understand Satan hates us because we are created in the image of Almighty God. Satan wants not only to be like God, but wants to exalt himself above God, as we read in 2 Thessalonians 2.4, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Satan has worked his way onto the TV screen where he is portrayed as a fun and caring guy on the path of redemption, where women love him and men want to be him. To be a Christian today is to rebel against these vices and to speak out against the highly weird experience that is beginning to invade almost every aspect of our lives and society. Satan is busy deceiving mankind, and mankind is falling for his deceptions. Make no mistake about Satan. There is no redemption for him. His fate has been sealed, as we read in Revelation 20.10. The devil who deceived them, was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Satan wants to take as many people to hell with him as possible. 1 Peter 5.8 Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Governor Kim Reynolds is denouncing a satanic holiday display at the State House. The Iowa Atheist and Free Thinkers Group and the Satanic Temple set up the display. It says that all religions should be represented in a public forum. But Reynolds said in a statement this morning she finds this display objectionable. She says the best way to respond is to pray over the Capitol and to recognize the nativity scene on display there instead. State Representative Brad Sherman is calling on Governor Reynolds to take down the display. In his newsletter, he claims the preamble to the Iowa Constitution refers to a supreme being, which is God. Sherman says with Satan being an enemy of God, the display is unconstitutional. It's scheduled to stay up through Friday the 15th. Psalm 46.10 Be still, and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. My advice to you today is to take this time that God has given us in His grace and mercy, and be still and know that He is God, and that He so loved the world, that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He who believes in the Son has everlasting life, and he who does not believe the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. If you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I implore you to do so today, as we are not guaranteed tomorrow. There is nothing more essential to the world than the gospel of Jesus Christ. In 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4, Paul declares what the gospel is and how important it is to embrace it and share it with others. He reminds the Corinthians of the gospel he preached among them that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, that Christ is coming back for his church someday in the rapture according to the scriptures, as we read in 1 Corinthians 15, 51 through 55. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, 
Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O Hades, where is your victory? Jesus promised his followers he was going to go and prepare a place for them in his Father's house, where there are many mansions, as we read in John 14, 1-3. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. This is the essence of the gospel, the pure gospel of Jesus Christ, his death on the cross for sinners, his resurrection to everlasting life, and his coming back someday is central to our Christian faith. 1 Corinthians 1.18 For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. Jesus, speaking to his disciples about the signs of his coming and the end of the age, declares this in Matthew 24, 12. And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. The Bible tells us lawlessness is the violation of God's commandments, as we read in 1 John 3, 4. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. Sin will be so rampant and so commonplace in the last days that the love people once had for one another, for many, will be non-existent. In this prophecy, Jesus Christ is describing an ongoing breakdown in the relationship with God. And since people's love for God is waning, it will be evident in the way people treat one another as well. A symptom may be that the love toward other people is decreasing, but the real cause is that the relationship with God is cooling off. This is what we are witnessing in our world today. Tonight, Seattle police searching for suspects and a pair of violent hit and runs recorded from inside the attacker's car. In the first, someone inside the vehicle tells the driver to hit a woman crossing the street. As the car strikes the woman, the people inside the car are heard laughing. Police say this surveillance video shows that same incident. In a second run-in, just a few blocks away from the first, the driver directly plows into another pedestrian walking in the bus lane, striking the victim from behind, sending them toppling over the roof of the vehicle. In each video, the driver targets and strikes random pedestrians. Tonight, I'm asking for anyone with information to please come forward. In a statement, the Seattle police writing that the suspect vehicle did not stop in either incident. Based on the speed of the impact, it's likely that the victim suffered serious injury. The department declined to clarify how they obtained the cell phone videos. It is so horribly unfortunate that you have uh, individuals in any community who would take such egregious tactics to hurt others and then somehow feel that it's comical. As far as the community is concerned, stay vigilant as you walk in and around your communities. The videos from Seattle, disturbing and remarkably similar to a case that dominated headlines in Las Vegas this summer. Two teens accused of killing a retired police chief in a hit and run using a stolen vehicle. Authorities say this video shows the moment Andy Probst was intentionally run down as he rode his bicycle. In body cam video taken after the driver's arrest, one of the suspects focused on the media attention he would get. You think I'm gonna come out on the news? You might. It won't be for anything good. It won't make your mama proud. Both Jesus Ayala and Jasmine Keys, who are being charged as adults, have pled not guilty to murder and numerous felony accounts. The pair seen laughing and smiling in court, enraging the victim's family. They were flipping us off. How are you, can you sit there after taking a man's life? Those videos just angering to watch. And I should note, in those cases in Seattle, police are not only asking for help in identifying the suspects, but also in identifying the victims. This happened in late November. And police say that detectives have reviewed 911 calls to check on police ports, uh, gone over hospital admissions, and even surveyed the area talking to witnesses for any clues, but they still haven't located the victims. 
It started here where a 55 year old woman allegedly drove through a group of people Saturday afternoon. You can still see the rocks behind me here as one witness tells me the woman came at the group from multiple different angles. Screaming, like even cars were honking. It was chaos, really. As Jamie Wegenman sat at a red light on 6th Avenue North and 27th Street around 1230 in the afternoon, a group of people gathered on the corner closest to Albertson's caught her eye. What happened next shocked her. I just kind of saw this white Jeep fly by me and then jump onto the sidewalk straight at the group of people that was there. According to Billings Police, that Jeep was being driven by 55-year-old Genevieve Rancourt. And the first thing that I thought was they lost control and they were in a wreck. Wegenman's initial thought was quickly changed when she watched the Jeep drive away from the group into the Albertsons parking lot and then drive straight at them from behind, like trying to catch them, not looking, not paying attention. Police say Rancret hit a 45-year-old man that was in the group, leaving him with minor injuries. Police say the gathering was the religious group Israelis for Christ. They were all wearing purple, and so it was clearly a group. Rancret allegedly fled the scene after driving at the group several times, but was located two hours later on the 700 block of Central Avenue. She was booked on charges of eight counts of felony assault with a weapon, felony criminal mischief, and a DUI. It was scary, to be honest. The Apostle Paul in his epistle to Timothy tells us in the last days society would be in a total immoral meltdown. 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power and from such people turn away. The arrest of a man suspected of capital murder and the shocking death of a high school cheerleader in Texas. On Tuesday, the mother of 16-year-old Lizbeth Medina discovered her body in the bathtub of their home. Tonight, the man police believe killed 16-year-old cheerleader Lizbeth Medina inside her own home in Edna, Texas, is in custody on suspicion of capital murder. Police arresting 23-year-old Rafael Govea Romero, who they say is undocumented Saturday night in Schulenburg, about 100 miles west of Houston. Hours earlier, police releasing surveillance photos of a man wearing a black sweatshirt seen driving a silver Ford Taurus. She was my motivation to keep pushing and driving. The community uniting with candles and balloons to honor Lizbeth at a vigil. 16-year-old female not conscious. Lizbeth's mother Jackie discovering her daughter in a bathtub just before 7 Tuesday night after the high schooler did not show up to a Christmas parade with her cheer squad. My daughter was found in a way that no mother should ever find their child. One of the many signs that we are living in the end times is the epidemic of wickedness and violence that is sweeping the world today. Jesus tells us when society parallels the days of Noah, he will return as we read in Matthew 24, 37 through 39. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and did not know until the flood came and took them all away, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. So what was going on in Noah's day that parallels our day? To find out the answer, we need to go back to the book of Genesis 6, 5 through 13. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. This is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generations. Noah walked with God, and Noah begot three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. So God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. And God said to Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. There is no doubt about the hour in which we live being the season for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ as we link Matthew 24, verses 12 and 37 through 39 with 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. The Bible describes our day very clearly from these scriptures. 
The condition of wickedness and violence that caused the earth to be destroyed in Noah's day is the same condition our earth is in today. The major headline overseas tonight, the Hamas threat elsewhere. Tonight, major raids from Denmark to Germany, with Hamas allegedly plotting revenge attacks in Europe now. Officials in Copenhagen announcing the arrests of seven suspects in a joint investigation with Israeli intelligence. German police arresting four suspected members of a Hamas accused of gathering weapons for a potential attack on Jewish institutions there. Meanwhile, here in the U.S., we've been reporting here that FBI Director Christopher Wray has repeatedly warned of the threat here, saying the highest terrorist threat environment since 9-11. Wray has said, quote, I see blinking lights everywhere I turn. In Israel tonight, the U.S. now ramping up the pressure on Israel. President Biden's national security advisor, Jake Sullivan, is there, urging Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to scale back the assaults on Gaza. What Netanyahu is now saying tonight, and President Biden now weighing in. Tonight, that high-stakes meeting in Israel. Thank you for your support. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan urging Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to scale back the most intense fighting amid the soaring civilian death toll in Gaza. He did talk about possible transitioning from what we would call high intensity operations, which is what we're seeing them do now, to lower intensity operations uh, sometime, you know, in the near future. A U.S. official confirming a report in the New York Times that a lower intensity operation may involve the use of smaller groups of elite Israeli forces that would carry out more precise missions to find and kill Hamas leaders, rescue hostages and destroy tunnels. President Biden day. weighing in. I want them to be focused on how to save civilian lives, not stop going after Hamas, but be more careful. Tonight, a U.S. official confirming that nearly half the air-to-ground munitions that Israel has used in Gaza have been unguided. So-called dumb bombs. Experts say dropping those bombs from lower altitudes, which a Pentagon official claims Israel is doing, can boost their precision. And Netanyahu defiant, saying Israel is more determined than ever to continue fighting until Hamas is eliminated. The Israeli military is releasing this video, showing dozens of men with their hands up surrendering, claiming they're Hamas militants who are operating inside a hospital. For the Gazans living under Israel's relentless bombardment, desperation and fear nowhere is safe. And after 69 days of fighting, concern for the more than 100 hostages who are still in the hands of Hamas. Our Inez de la Qatara, sitting down with recently freed hostage Raz Ben Ami, the 57-year-old was kidnapped with her husband, Ohad, on October 7th. I want my husband back. Raz was released two weeks ago, today clutching the hands of her two daughters. Are you okay? How can I be okay when he's there and I'm here? And we miss him. We want our family back together. That's what we want. That's all we want. Our family back together. The Biden administration wants Israel to move to a more tactical, targeted uh, operation as soon as possible. But they also want a plan for the future of Gaza, not just the end of Hamas. The United Nations agencies and the African Union Commission have called for urgent action to end a food security crisis in Africa. According to a joint report released during the UN's climate change conference in Dubai, hundreds of millions of people across the continent, many young children, face the prospect of more hunger and malnutrition in 2024. Africa's young population is set to double by 2050 ensuring they have access to nutritious food to maintain their development is a priority for many leaders and organizations on the continent. However, it's much easier said than done. Several factors are hindering Africa's efforts to meet the food security and nutrition targets of the Sustainable Development Goals by 2030. These include factors that are within their control, such as internal conflicts but many which they cannot influence, such as climate change, the COVID-19 pandemic, and external conflicts. The fighting between Russia and Ukraine, countries which are major suppliers of wheat to Africa, has brought huge challenges. The Food and Agriculture Organization, the UN Economic Commission for Africa, the World Food Programme, and the African Union Commission have released a joint report highlighting alarming statistics on food insecurity and malnutrition in the continent. According to the findings, in 2022, nearly 282 million people in Africa were undernourished, an increase of 57 million people since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic. 
An estimated 868 million people were moderately or severely food insecure in the same year, with more than two-thirds of this population being from Central, Eastern and Western Africa. Among those affected the most are children under the age of five, where 30 percent of them are stunted because of malnutrition. The uh, report says the Afri that Africa is facing a food crisis of unprecedented proportions. How bad is the situation and what else does the report say? The situation is uh, unfortunately pretty bad. Um, you know, talking about uh, more than 860 million people food insecure in Africa, uh, it tells a lot. When you talk about food insecurity, it means uh, this huge proportion of the population do not have uh, food available. Uh, they face challenges of accessibility, but also affordability. And we're dealing with a significant majority of the population, a factor that affects the majority of the population. It's pretty bad. What makes it even worse is that uh, about 78% of these people are unable to afford a healthy diet. So it's also linked with uh, the level of income they receive. And when we are talking about uh, hundreds of millions of people and the trend uh, is increasing, it's a major source of concern. So the situation is pretty, pretty bad. What other factors are contributing to this food crisis in Africa? In the report, we have uh, outlined the, what we call the drivers of uh, food insecurity and malnutrition. Uh, they are intertwined. Uh, some of them are natural uh, caused, others are man-made. Um, for example, droughts and floods are a frequent phenomenon in many parts of the continent. Uh, these are climate-induced but also uh, conflicts and instability has been affecting a number of countries in, across the continent. This is an image that many politicians in Argentina don't want the world to see. Two-month-old Brianna Aragon is malnourished and is infected with the skin disease scabies. She lives with her mother in the northern province of Santiago del Estero, and they come to this NGO for assistance. I used to get diapers here, but now I'm getting extra milk. What we're able to earn isn't enough because of inflation. Argentina produces food for more than 400 million people. That's 10 times its population. Many see this as a historic failure in addressing endemic hunger and poverty in the country. Argentina's government provides economic assistance for children in the country, but many say that it's not enough. Soaring inflation and in many cases lack of education make it that many children are not getting the food they need. Analysts predict this year's inflation will be close to 200 percent. And that is a problem in a country where at least 60 percent of the children are poor. For more than a year, the Federal Reserve has raised interest rates in an effort to lower inflation. Prices are still high, however, especially when it comes to basic necessities like groceries. With a growing number of Americans living paycheck to paycheck, many are struggling to make ends meet. About 500 a week, if not more. $500 a week to feed your family? Yes. Amber Bergeron of Dutchtown, Louisiana, is a stay-at-home mother of four. Her husband works as a tankerman in the oil field. She tells CBN News how tough it is trying to keep up with rising monthly expenses. Honestly, I don't know if it gets any worse, how much longer we'll be able to uh, keep our head above water. Amber is not alone. The standard of living for Americans has dropped in the last two to three years. And according to this recent survey, 52% of adults said they have felt more financially stressed since before the pandemic in 2020. Reasons for this economic stress include sticker shock for everyday goods and services. For example, car prices are much higher than just a few years ago. We've had uh, the price of a new car get precariously close to an average of $50,000 a vehicle, and virtually no car is available in terms of a new vehicle at $20,000 or below. And median home prices are up 31 percent since 2020. Mark Hamrick, senior economic analyst for Bankrate, points to record inflation as the driving force. Until inflation is brought under control, we're going to continue to have 
these uh, strains that Americans are feeling. Hamrick says the major issue is prices going up faster than incomes. That means the essentials like groceries and housing cost more, although people have less money to pay for them. Many households need two income earners just to keep pace. Uh, and that's also within the uh, constraints of high health care prices, the high cost of food and energy, as well as access to higher education. Local food banks are also feeling the impact. Chris Tan of the Food Bank of Southeastern Virginia and Eastern Shore says demand is higher today than when COVID sent the economy reeling. They're seeing increases of 50 to 60 percent from the from the height of a of the pandemic. And so they're serving some of them will serve two times as many people as they did the last year and three times as many people as they did in 2019. To cope, a growing number of Americans are turning to plastic. According to Quicken, 46 percent of consumers making more than $100,000 a year are more dependent on their credit cards than ever before, and about a third say they can't afford to pay off their balances by the end of the year. Meanwhile, as inflation seems to be cooling, many say government policies remain out of touch with reality and the pain families are facing. I just would like to know where and when it started easing up because I would love to be able to feel that as well. I just feel like myself and quite a few other Americans feel like we've been abandoned and just left to drown. We are currently living in a time Jesus refers to as the birth pains. We are fast approaching a time known as the tribulation that Jesus says will be the worst time in human history as we read in Matthew 24, 21. For then there will be great tribulation such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time. No, nor ever shall be. We are currently witnessing events that will continue to become more frequent and more intense until God pours out his final judgments on an unbelieving and unrepentant world. One of the judgments described in the book of Revelation includes the price of food being so high and scarce that it will cost a full day's wages just to barely get enough to eat, as we read in Revelation 6, 5, and 6. When he opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, Come and see. So I looked, and behold, a black horse, and he who sat on it had a pair of scales in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four living creatures saying, A quart of wheat for a denarius, and three quarts of barley for a denarius, and do not harm the oil and the wine. In this prophecy, it will cost a day's wages just for a loaf of bread. We are not in the tribulation period yet, but we are getting extremely close. The World Health Organization says it is very worried about the spread of a severe strain of mpox. The disease, formerly known as monkeypox, has killed close to 600 people in the Democratic Republic of Congo. The nation has reported more than 13,000 cases this year. The head of the World Health Organization's mpox response, Rosamund Lewis, says the mpox variant circulating in the Democratic Republic of Congo is very severe. The disease has claimed nearly 600 lives in the D DRC this year. Most of them were children. On Thursday, the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention issued an alert about the dangerous Clade 1 Mpox outbreak. The Congolese Health Ministry is working with the World Health Organization on the response. Mpox is a viral infection that spreads through close contact with infected people, causing flu-like symptoms and a painful rash. But in some cases, it can prove fatal. The disease can also spread to humans from infected animals like monkeys and bats. Many people in the DRC like eating those wild animals. The world's first case of human mpox was detected in a nine-month-old child in the DRC in 1970. The World Health Organization is worried about the risk of the infection spreading to neighboring countries. Jesus prophesied of future plagues associated with the last days, as we read in Luke 21:11, And there will be great earthquakes in various places and famines and pestilences, and there will be fearful sights and great signs from heaven. Meantime, Sudan's health ministry and the World Health Organization have reported at least 5,000 suspected cases of cholera, including 160 associated deaths. Efforts to control the spread of the disease in the country are being hampered by a widespread conflict which has devastated the healthcare system. Saleh Idris is one of thousands across Sudan who are being treated for the bacterial disease known as cholera. He is at this isolation center in Port Sudan on the Ritzy coast and sounded a stark warning 
to his compatriots. Everything happened so fast. You can get cholera in a minute and your life will change. The collapse of the health system in some states has enabled the spread of diseases of the intestinal system, including cholera. They also have to contend with a widespread civil conflict, which has displaced millions. The capital city Khartoum, which is at the heart of the conflict, is also a major battleground in the fight against this cholera outbreak, with the health authorities unable to get safe access to the city, is likely to spread further there in the coming weeks. For those who do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, disease should be a reminder that life on this earth is fragile and can be lost at any moment. As bad as pandemics are, hell will be far worse. The Christian, however, has the assurance of salvation and the hope of eternity because of the blood of Christ shed on the cross for us, as we read in Isaiah 53, 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Luke 21, 26 through 28. Men's hearts failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads, because your redemption draws near. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive in faith the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church, you may be at work, you may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! Time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.